Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. The theme, of course, you know, is a new wave of glory. And the text says, but we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When a team is given. You will know as a preacher uh, what kind of uh, way you should relate. Some theme expects you to preach. I want a already we come on was I mean, for example, if you, if the team is behold the lamb. You know that is a preaching invitation to people to look unto Jesus. If the topic like uh, Wednesday is sanctification. Be a corita shenyo jo Wednesday to so niti yani soto ni fare ni so di mimo. Then you know you are expected to teach. Awa mo gege bi oni wa su to yonanti be on lati she koni. That's not just preaching, but it is teaching. Ije peko wa su ni kon shi mo kon jay e kon e koni ni nu oro loro. But when you have a topic like. All will be well. You know, God is asking you to bring a prophetic message. to bring a prophetic message. You know, God is asking you to bring a prophetic message. I mean, for example, tonight, it's going to be well for someone. The theme for this year's convention that we are to address tonight a new wave of glory is absolutely prophetic. And because it's a prophetic Topic. It is not necessarily going to be very long. You are not preaching. You are not necessarily teaching. You are prophesying. And so it can be very brief. I mean, there have been a time when God gave a prophetic topic. And I was prepared. Prepared a sermon that who lasts at least one and a half hours. After 15 minutes, God stopped me and said, I've already done what I want to do. Keep your notes. I'm telling you this. Because in the next five minutes, God may say, Stop. 
Because the one that he has in mind has received what he wants to receive. Because there's no doubt about it at all. Is someone listening to me now? You're moving into a new wave of glory. Now, glory comes in waves. One, one wave may die and then another wave begins. Many a times in between two waves there could be something different from glory. So it is possible for someone to know glory before and then for one reason or the other he now knows shame and then God moves him to another glory you know between two hills there could be a valley but I'm standing as a representative of my father in heaven tonight. That if your glory of the past has been followed by shame, that shame is over tonight. Amen. Usually, a, a, a wave of glory is associated with an individual. That's why there could be a multitude like we have tonight. And it could be just one fellow that God is interested in. Joseph. Joseph brought his family to Egypt. And as long as Joseph was alive, Israel was uh, in a glorious situation. Israel was in a glorious situation. Then Joseph died. Joseph And a new king arose that didn't know Joseph. And the glory of Israel became shame. But then one day, Moses came. Moses what? And there was a new wave of glory. I prophesy to someone right now. Your Moses is coming. Moses, And then Moses died. Moses, no, I do not be And Joshua took over. Ben, Joshua, Bashan. And what Moses had not been able to do, Joshua did it. He took the children of Israel into the promised land. And I prophesy to someone tonight. <laughs> I told you it's a prophetic message. That goal that you have not been able to achieve. 
you will achieve now. Oh, President, and then after some years David came David and he went from one victory to another to another I declare in the name of the one who made heaven and earth. Your victories will be won after another. Amen. And after David, Solomon came. And if, if you are a Bible scholar, you will discover that Solomon didn't fight a single war. Victories are good things. And what is he Victories are good things. Peace is better. Throughout the period of Solomon, he never fought a war. And the next decree I'm making. Before I give it to you, I'm giving it to myself. And I'm saying, oh, we be, Now I have fought a war. I have fought a war. I have a I Let, let, let me be a bit more specific. Yeah, well, so you are and uh, like I promise I will try and be as quick as possible because I don't know when daddy will stop me. Because even if he says stop now, some people are already blessed. <laughs> Some of us will never fight another Amen. war. Now, when we, when we talk about a new wave of glory, like I said, it could mean you on a hill before. Then you went into a valley. And then you begin to climb again. Oh, how I love the testimony of that, my daughter. She had a shop. Six story building. Within a single day, everything collapsed. Burnt down, destroyed. I'm sure that day she wasn't singing Hallelujah. But then, there was another wave. And we saw her tonight. Smiling. What was destroyed had been restored. I decree to someone everything the devil has destroyed in your life, you will get it back. Now, when, when we, we want to look at one or two examples very quickly, we want to look at the case of uh, the man the Bible says had a withered hand. In Luke chapter 6, 
from verse 6 to 10. Luke chapter 6, from verse 6 to 10. The Bible says the man had a withered hand. And he was in the church, he was in the synagogue. The withered hand means the hand was strong before. But then he withered. The glory became shame. Anytime they want to describe the man. They said, don't you know the man with the withered hand? His ability was gone. You know, I'm among the elders, when they want to say somebody is uh, destitute, they will say, he has no hand to show. That's another way of saying his hand has been withered. But then the Almighty God came in. And I thank God for the last testimony we had. I just went to console my secretary because he lost her mother. But we stepped into the house. And miracles began to happen. Tonight, the Almighty God Himself, the one I serve. The one who called me, the one who anointed me, we step into your house. Jesus stepped into the temple. Yes, you temple. And the hand that had been withered was restored back. In every area that your hand has been withered, expect a surprise today. Amen. Or you, or you can consider the case of a man in Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25. Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25. They said they brought a blind man to Jesus. He led him out of the city. And then he spat on his eyes. And asked him. After putting his hand on him. He said, uh, Can you see anything? The man said, Oh, yes. I see men like trees. How did he know that there's something called trees? Because he used to see. And the problem came. And he couldn't see anymore. But my Lord touched him again. And he could now see clearly. Let me start with those of you who have challenges with your eyes. In the name that's above every other name. 
you will get brand new eyes. Again, I'm referring to that last testimony. This fellow had been blind for years. And he told you more or do and came to see Daddy Gio. Oh, well, I did Daddy Gio. Daddy Gio was not around. Daddy Gio is still around. What? And the secretary said, "Ben, I can't wait for her." I'm the secretary or not? I can't wait for me. Oh, I'm here, Daddy Gio. But then he took an handkerchief that we had blessed before. Oh, I'm not sure. No, you can't. Is that it? I do not see that. Use it to touch the eyes. Oh, because you know. Four days later, the fellow came back, seeing completely. You don't need Daddy Gio tonight. You have his God. He will touch you. He will restore your sight. Amen. But, but you know that sight also is associated with vision. When we talk of vision, we are also talking about ambition. Things you Hope to become. Oh, as several of us who had seen ourselves great, doing mighty things. And then after years, we feel that that's not going to. It's not likely that's going to be. I prophesy to you tonight. Every greatness you dream about shall come to pass. When we dream of a new wave of glory. We could talk about somebody who used to be rich. And then became poor. And then recovered. Like the example of Job. That I sang about yesterday. I apologize to those of you who don't speak English. Uh, I apologize to those of you who don't speak Yoruba. I've been told that uh, now maybe I should stop the Ewe. Ah. So that uh, we will not be cheating those who cannot uh, understand Yoruba. <laughs> but there's a covenant between me and my God. I will praise him. And the best way you can praise God is in your mother tongue. There's no English translation for Ogbenineja Kero Bonija. You saw the you saw the choir singing in Igbo. I didn't understand what they were saying. But I was thrilled to my bones. What I'm trying to say is this. Job was worthy before. Tragedy came. 
He lost everything. But the Bible says in Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42. From verse 10 to 12. 10 to 12. The Bible says God turned the captivity of Job. And things became glorious again. All of you who used to be rich. And now you are struggling. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall be wealthy again. When we talk about a new wave of glory. Thank you, Father. Daddy says there's someone here. Daddy near the company be or oh, listening to me wherever. That your progress was steady and fast before. Then all of a sudden it stopped. The Lord asked me to tell you. Your progress will be faster than yeah. ever before. <laughs> I mean, we were already prophesying, yeah. but Daddy is throwing some things inside. Daddy says I should tell someone. Daddy, look at someone and come. The one who set your marriage on fire shall be set on fire soon. Amen. When we talk about a new wave of glory, we can look at it from the mental aspect. And we, a good example will be Daniel chapter 4. From the beginning to the end. Talks about a king. Mighty king. And then he didn't listen to advice. And he became like an animal for seven years. But then one day, God in his mercy restored his understanding. And he himself said, Excellent glory was added unto me. I believe this is for students. After tonight, you will never fail another exam. But then it is possible to go from one glory to another without even a break. Or if there are breaks, it will, there will be breaks that will just be brief, that will lead you to something higher. Like Joseph, for example. You know his story. He was the favorite of his father. He was wearing a coat of many colors. 
It was the envy of the brothers. Then he started dreaming. And that created a problem. Because God showed him the future. And he couldn't keep it to himself. And so the brother sold him to slavery. You know the story. And when he became a slave in the house of the of the slave owner he became chief executive officer and then somebody lied against him they threw him to prison when he got to prison he became the chief executive oh, officer. Dear, oh, and then he moved from prison to the palace. Oh, wow. Between prime minister. Oh, wow. And then one day, oh, his brothers came. Oh, and fell down before him. I prophesied to someone. Those who say you won't reach your goal, they are coming to bow down to you. So he just moved from one wave of glory to another and to another and to another. But the Lord asked me to address two specific cases tonight. So I want to go to those ones because, like I said, I'm sensing in my spirit that he may ask me to stop soon. So let me take those two quickly. If he allows him, continue. He wants me to talk to those who feel that Destiny has not been kind to them. You know, for example, in Genesis chapter 48, from verse 8 to 20, Genesis 48, from verse 8 to 20, <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. A Lord asked me to tell someone. You will never again be referred to as an ex-champion. You know what that means? For the rest of your life, you will be a reigning champion. Joseph brought his two sons to his father. Joseph Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh and he placed Manasseh where the right hand of the father will land. And put Ephraim, the second born, where the left hand will land. Because the father couldn't see very well. 
But the father crossed his hands. Placed the right hand on the head of the younger. And the left hand on the head of the elder. Ah. Joseph said, Daddy, no, no. Daddy. This is the first bond, this is the second bond. The father said, I know. I know what I'm doing. This one is just going to be greater than this one. What is the offense of Manasseh? Never done anything wrong. The Lord asked me to talk about this particular case. Because some of you must have been wondering. Uh, in what ways are so and so better than I? How come he is uh, succeeding so well? I mean, we all know that our, our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. He says, I will be merciful to whom I be merciful. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And you can challenge him. And occasionally when you grumble, somebody will tell you. I don't you know fingers are not supposed to be equal. I know. I, I know fingers are not supposed to be equal. Uh, why am I not the bigger finger? The Lord asked me to tell you that it is the end that matters. Because if you read the book of Revelation chapter 7 and you read it from verse 4 to 8 Revelation 7 from verse 4 to 8 The Bible was talking about 144,000 people that were sealed and the and it, it took them 12 from each tribe. When you read that passage, the first thing you will discover is that Ephraim was no longer there. The second thing you will discover is that they mentioned the name of Manasseh before they mentioned the name of Joseph. Initially, it looks as if God didn't favor Manasseh. But at the end, he became greater than his father. I have good news for someone here tonight. Those of you who think, how come God has dealt like this with me? He asked me to tell you specifically tonight, your end will be better than your beginning. Amen. And he asked me to tell you a little story. You know, I've not been telling stories tonight. Because I've 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 been telling stories
It's a prophetic night. Oh dear, let's tell her. When we were in the universities, that time Benile University. In the 1960s. Yeah, what the 1960s? <laughs> Before many of you were born. Kato biyo po yi. There was a group of us who are very, very close. And you know, young boys, we tease ourselves. We look at the way we were performing. And so we always say, uh, who is most likely to succeed? Who is the least likely to be very successful? There was one of us. Almost every year. He will fail a paper. So he will have to come back to do receipt. Finally, he left with a degree. The kind we call, let my people go. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You are first class, second class, upper. Uh, up to third class. The, the people who are not in any class. Those are the ones we used to call, let my people go. Just, just give me something, let me go. So our friend left with. Let my people go. And people like me, we went to do second degree, third degree. He was quietly teaching with his let my people go. Then something happened. I had to go and do some work in the town where I was staying. And I stayed with him. And his mother died. So I was, ah, my friend. Hey. Burial ceremony. I said, well, I I have five pounds in my savings in Lagos. And that was true. That was all I had. With my PhD. I said, I will go and withdraw it and bring it to you. He laughed. He called me by my nickname. <laughs> I won't tell you so you don't begin to. <laughs> he said, you, you are always kind. He said, let me tell you the truth. My problem is not money. It is how to spend it. Why? Kennedy. God gave him an inspiration. A lot from funny, Missica. By the time I was getting PhD, but I think he was using the inspiration God gave him. Oh no, Missy, a lot of funny. He has built two giant buildings when I didn't, I was still struggling to pay my rent. The Lord asked me to tell someone, I will inspire you. Hmm. 
know the Bible says in Job chapter 32. Verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. The Bible says there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. An inspiration. One day somebody is going to stand at this altar. And first of all, before telling us his story or her story, he or she will say, Daddy, I have a request. I want permission that your budget for the next year congress oh, congress in you. convention oh, convention you. pastor salary so oh, special holy ghost in you. i will pay amen and he, he or she will refer to tonight. I said, God gave me an inspiration. If you are that one, let me hear you Amen. shout a really Amen. big hallelujah. Then there's a second special case that God asked me to talk about. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Daddy says I should tell someone. Don't abandon that project. It's going to turn out bigger and better than you think. The Lord wants me to direct special attention to someone who lost prominence because of his own or her own weakness. And he wants me to discuss with you briefly about a fellow called Esau. You know the story of Esau, so I don't need to go. You know, he was the one who sold his birthright just for a plate of food. You know, I spoke about him yesterday. So God is not tolerating not having control over your stomach. The things came down hard on him. The day was to be blessed. The mother plotted against him. The father was careless. And pulled the blessing on the younger fellow. When he cried to the father, Don't you have a blessing left? The blessing that the father pronounced on him was almost a curse. You shall serve your brother. Came out of the mouth of his father. But somewhere along the line, God decided to show him mercy and turn the tide for him. So that by the time we got to Genesis 32, 
From verse 3 to 7. Genesis 32 from verse 3 to 7. When the one who got the blessing was coming. And he sent to the one who got a mixture of blessing and curse. And they told the man who got the blessing. Your brother is coming. With a bodyguard of 400 men. The brother trembled. I think I've talked about this before. The first time a president came to the Holy Ghost uh, Congress here. At that time, there was no building. It was just open field. He came with 250 bodyguards. He saw her, the bodyguard of 400. When he met the brother the following day, and the brother gave him presents to see if he could use that to buy favor. He said to the brother, Keep your own. I have enough. I have enough. The Lord specifically asked me to tell someone, the fellow who know himself or herself. You messed up. That's why you are where you are. But he asked me to tell you. Because of this convention. He has forgiven you. Amen. What did I do? And very soon. Like very soon. Like you will say. Oh, we pay. I have more than enough. Amen. Well, praise God, at least I've, I've covered those ones. Not even when I lay. And he hasn't asked me to stop yet. But then in do now in that one was glory be to God. Go in for a lot. That gives me an opportunity to talk about a new wave of glory in the spiritual. And the example I will use will be the example of Peter. You know he was a spokesman. He will talk first and think later. Even when the Lord says somebody that you are all going to be offended him, he said, me, don't you know? So even if I have to die with you, I'm ready. Then he hit the ground hard. But then God restored him. And then he began to go from glory to glory. Oh, I bless you, Lord, let you know, go, then no go. He preached a sermon, 3,000 were saved. He preached a second sermon, 5,000. Another sermon, multitude. He started by healing, by touching. He went on and on. 
the shadow began to heal. He was raising the dead. As a minister of God here tonight, listen to me carefully. My daddy asked me to tell you. Your ministry will go from glory to glory. Ah. Okay. There's more to say, but Daddy says I should wind up. Daddy, Nicky, my mom, go go see, come on. When they asked me to tell somebody, oh, this a very come. He said, your tro your marriage became troubled. Oh, this last go be go no be ya wo re. When the doctor said, "In but here, I want to shake and weep." You have zero sperm count. In can talk more, can read, can learn, can can know. He asked me to tell you. What is so far? I made the heavens and the earth out of nothing. They made down on one year. They know they go see. Your children are on the way. Amen. I'm a red baller now. Thank you, Daddy. I said, Daddy. I want to say amen to this one. <laughs> and it will surprise you. I'm saying amen to it. Oh yeah, let me go. He asked me to tell someone. <laughs> Stop doubting me. I still do the impossible. Amen. Ah. Daddy says Daddy we go That's as you tell someone Yeah so fun and go Against all odds No this is go go isele to be laye ka re ati ayida Irrespective of all enemies against you O ne fi se yo ta to dogun mo You will excel O ta yo I want to close. But there's one very interesting thing God asked me to share now. You know, when we were young, we look forward to Christmas. I still do. I think many people do. So we begin to count the days to Christmas. So December 25, Christmas Day. December 24, Christmas Eve. December 23, the eve of the eve of Christmas Day. <laughs> the Lord asked me to tell somebody. Tonight is the eve of the eve of your greatness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How do I become a partaker of a new wave of glory? Very, very simple. Just one thing. Refuse to annoy God. 
lati se olorun ma mu binu that's all ko ju be lo because he's the one who can move you from one spot to another promotion comes from him he lifts one up brings down another wisdom belongs to him breakthrough belongs to him Joseph was able to reach his goal. Joseph will let be le bare. Simply because. In Genesis chapter 39. In the Genesis story ko ko dinu ogoji. From verse 1 to 9. That is a can you see it so? Genesis 39. Genesis story ko ko dinu ogoji. From verse 1 to 9. That is a can you see it so? When that agent of the devil. Ibati asoju esu ni. Sek Come and lie with me. Joseph said, Joseph, we How can I do this thing? And sin against my God. How can I do this thing and offend God? You want to be a partaker of the new wave of glory? Make up your mind. I will never offend God again. My children know me. Those who I mean, I'm talking of my biological children. I'm a baby, me, mommy. When it is time to ask for something special, Daddy has only one prayer. God, God don't let me offend you. Because I know once I don't offend him, the whole world can be against me. They will be stepping stone to glory. But if God is against you, who can be for you? Take a decision tonight. That you will never offend God again. That when nobody is around to see what you are doing. Remember. Remember. God is watching. Is the creator of waves of glory. The, fat, the Bible calls him Father of Glory. The Bible calls him the King of Glory. The Bible calls him the God of Glory. Glory belongs to him. If it's your friend, you've got it made. If it's your enemy, you are done for. You want to write down your prayer points? Because We've made an altar call tonight, and I believe after that powerful message, <laughs> I don't think there can be anybody who's still not born again. What if we see people back there, free fire and for Jesus? Let you want to talk about any more when you can eat what you see fire for Jesus. Just in case you have not given your own life to Jesus, but you are going to let you fear you refugees. You need to know 
Then when others are praying, you better, you better go to the altar and surrender your life. Prayer point number one. Praise God. That you are able to participate in this year's convention. Praise God. Prayer point number two. Father, Baba, please restore my withered hand. Your war, In any area of my life where my hand has been withered, restore my withered hand. Restore my sight. Restore my vision. Number four. Father, please. Baba Joe. Let all my dreams be fulfilled. Number five. Father, please inspire me. Baba, you are for me, Missy. Inspire me tonight. Lord, you are for me, Missy. Number six. Ikefa. Father, let me have a share. In the new wave of glory. Baba Jane Pen in no go to ton a tick be rain shallow. Let me have a share. Jan Tia Labak me jan nick me no it be go to ton in the new wave of glory. In no it be go to ton number seven KJ. That's your own private prayer point. Adura lo don, ala dagba arere to ba ni to fe fi kon. I know there is a lot of space. O wa pe ala fo be around the altar. Ni bi pepe left and right. Lo wa la fi a lo wa tun wa. So if you want to come to the altar to pray, to bafe wa si bi pepe to lati gbadura. You are welcome. Akio kabo. Those of you who are there wanting to pray for salvation, cry to God, he will save your soul. Iwo to wa nbe to fe gbadura igbalokan. Keto yo gbo kan re la. I'm going to give you only 15 minutes <laughs> to pray. So you better make it intense. Cry to the Almighty God. This is a night like no other night. Call on God now.
In mighty name, pray. God will grant your request. In every area that you have failed, you will now begin to succeed. It will restore your withered hands. It will restore your sight. It will restore your vision. It will fulfill your dreams. You will fly over obstacles. You will reach your goal. You will have a share of the new wave of glory. And you will never offend God again. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's return to our seats.